impact and today's host i'm sorry i'm the host but today's guest because you're all used to seeing me this is shay <laughs> <laughs> um but our guest today is the amazing demetria buoy and demetria here is really a successful entrepreneur who has overcome just incredible odds to achieve her dreams now she went from being a high school dropout to living in a dysfunctional family in a group home. And honestly, she's seen it all. Um, but really, it's with that determination and grit that's within her that she was able to turn things around and now shares her story in one of her books. She's got a few, um, but this one is From Broken Woman to Business Woman. And this book provides 12 simple steps to help readers become successful entrepreneurs and achieve their goals. She really is proof that anyone can succeed with hard work and a positive mindset. So please help me welcome to the stage, Demetria. Welcome, welcome. How are you? Hi, I'm awesome. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm excited to kind of dive into your story because, you know, we all have like that origin story and, and the grit and the determination that kind of helps keep pulling us forward. I definitely want to dive into that. But before we do, um, is there anything else that you would want to share um, about how it is that you're creating impact in the world and who it is that you're mainly serving? So thank you again so much for having me. So excited to be here. Um, yes, so um, we, how um, we are serving um, in our community is, as I was telling you about the magazine, um, the magazine came in 2014 and I was just super excited to start it. I went to different magazine companies and I wanted to be in their magazine front cover, whatever. I just always wanted to like own a magazine and they were telling me, no, it was no, 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 no. We don't know you. Who are you? And it was going through that. And I didn't think that I could ever own a magazine. And I went home and, you know, just sitting there, it was like, you can have your own magazine, but it took some hours. I was just sitting there. And I refuse to, you know, feel sorry for myself at that moment from those no's. And so I called one of my uh, publishers and I said, I want to start my own magazine. She was like, yeah, it's definitely possible. I said, I want to give back to the women who was once like me. And I want to give them a safe place to share their story, to promote their businesses, because a lot of um, entrepreneurs out there, you know, during that time and still now doesn't really have a place to showcase what they are really doing in the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. So you didn't necessarily have anybody that was like, yes, I need to put you on the cover. So you went, I'm putting myself <laughs> on the cover. I'm pretty yes. sure I kind of did the same thing. Did she not? <laughs> Where she was like, well, I'm just always going to be on the cover of my own magazine. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did, did you say Oprah? I did. Yeah. I, I. You know what? When I looked at her, I said I never really see anybody else <laughs> on the front cover. Of the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you if you have you know you see something a need in the world and there's nobody that's like supporting it or moving that piece forward, then why not you? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, love I love that. So, you know, like I said, I want to kind of dive into um, a little bit of your background and a little bit of, you know, how you've you've gone from that, quote unquote, bo broken background to now thriving as, you know, a businesswoman and an entrepreneur and a mentor um, for other women and sharing your voice um, in the space. So tell us a little bit about like how you how you started out and what was it what was that grit what was that determination what was the the voice inside of you that kept speaking that allowed you to keep pushing through and eventually you know start hosting your own conferences and such Yes so it all started when I was a teenager uh, when I wrote my first book as I was writing that book I knew that, um, you know, I was facing so many challenges of like being bitter, unforgiveness. I always had my head down. 
never thought I was pretty enough for anything. Um, I self um, sabotaged myself a lot. And it started when I was a teenager. Um, I was almost molested by a family member in the family. And it affected my adulthood as I got older, not just romantically, but just different relationships because like I became a people pleaser and I wanted to just please absolutely everybody. Um, absolutely did not love myself. I didn't know what self-love was, but um, I remember when I was homeless, no food, no money, absolutely nothing. And I remember walking into a Goodwill store and I had on regular clothes and I ended up meeting this lady and she ended up buying me a book, um, a notebook and a pen. And I went back to that car and I said, I'm going to live. I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And I said, everything that had been holding inside of me, I said, I have to release this. I can't, <clears throat> excuse me. I can't keep this in any longer of everything that I have been going through. So I released a lot through my writing. I started writing down what I could remember and why did I feel this way? Why was I this way? You know, why nobody protected me and my family? You mm -hmm. know, I didn't feel love, all of that stuff. So I was releasing all of that uh, from inside of me. Didn't know I was going to turn into a book, absolutely anything. And I did. And I wrote my first book called Refuse to Lose. And so as I went on, I was still learning so much about me and I really didn't, still didn't know who I was. And I ended up getting married and my biggest, biggest wake up call was when I got married mm -hmm. and I went to the doctor and it was like, you're pre-diabetic, your cholesterol is high, um, your blood pressure is high. I seen 310, 310 on the scale, never seen 310 a day in my life. And I was in an unhealthy relationship and I was making money from my business. I'm talking about it was flourishing. Money was coming in. Thousands was coming in for my money. I mean, from my business, but I was married to an alcoholic and the money was leaving. Mm. I was not, nothing was going right in that area. And so when I got out of that, that going to the doctor and seeing that, that was my biggest wake up call. I got a divorce and I was getting ready to get into another relationship. But I took that moment and there was something inside of me. And I said that intuition that said, you need to take a break. Um, it's time for you. And so since 2020, I've been learning self-love. I've been learning more about what I want to do. Who am I? That was my biggest question to ask myself. And I was asking myself that question for some months. It was like, who am I? And all the books that I have been writing, I was writing to please other people. I was writing books to what, what other people wanted me to do. I always asked for permission. I always needed validation. Um, and I said, and so I started writing my novel, my first romance thriller novel. And I say, you know what? This is who I am. I am a romance writer. And it started with just doing affirmations every single day saying, you know, I am beautiful. And I speak in the I am, you know, and I am worthy. I am deserving. And that took a moment, but that's, you know, the change started there. Yeah. And so there's in your story, there's a couple of different things that I, I kind of hear. It's like, there were moments in your life where somebody either came into it or you had an aha or you had an intuition or something came in. Yeah. So the first one yeah. that I heard you talk about is a woman ended up buying you a pen and, you know, a pad of paper or some, a book to write in. And that's the mm -hmm. first step that kind of got you mm -hmm. on your journey of becoming an yeah. author and a writer mm -hmm. and just getting it out of your body. Yeah. Right. So it's like, if there was that that would be to me like as an action step for mm -hmm. listeners here is like if there's stuff that's stuck get it out on paper just even if it's not to show to anybody else right like you probably weren't planning on showing any of that stuff to anybody no. right it's just like <laughs> no. get it out of you yeah. right so that's exactly. the first one that I heard you talk about 
<laughs> the next one I heard you talk about is like when you you saw the number was it 310 was the number yes yeah it was so three, you saw 310 pounds 310 yeah. that was kind of like another like boom universe in yeah. your face god in your face yeah. whatever it is for you of like hey something needs to change and it, you tell me this this is how i see it um there's always opportunities that the universe is bringing into your awareness it's whether or not we listen to them and we hear oh, them yeah. and we take action would you say oh, yeah. that's how it works oh, yeah. for you oh yes most definitely i was that woman that never listened to my intuition like it was there and it was always in my gut feeling but I was like oh this is how I want to see that person or this is how I want to see the situation rather than sitting back and saying like when I got married you know it was do not marry him no Mm -hmm. no no don't do it and I was like well you know what he will change and I was still in my broken you know like okay this is it for me. You know, I was looking in a reality to 3d rather than looking at what I was speaking or what I was writing down. I was looking like, okay, I'm in a small town. I don't have a vehicle, blah, blah. You know, it was, it was that for me. And rather than just not looking at your right now, but looking at how tomorrow can change, how next week can change. Um, And so, no, I didn't listen to that inner voice, that gut feeling, that intuition. And I feel that that's the best gift that God has given us, you know? And um, yeah, so. Well, and so I'm I'm curious to know the, the book you mentioned, Broken Women to Business Women, you, you have like these 12 steps of like becoming a successful entrepreneur, I would love for you to you know, maybe share a couple of those steps and oh, yes. how did those steps come about, you know, through your, your story? Yes. So with number one, I talk about acknowledging the things that you have been through in your life. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, um, I know the people that I have mentored, even myself, that it was hard to acknowledge a lot of things that you have been through. Because when I started seeing a lot of millionaires and billionaires committing suicide, I was just like, a lot of them probably never dealt with the past. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are walking around with carrying so much with them. They may have money, they may be successful in that area, but still not successful mentally. Walking around with so much. And it's, it's so therapeutic to get out and acknowledge the things that you have been through. Even again, even if you share it with nobody, even if you're just journaling, you know, get those things out. And and that takes work. You know, some people I've heard say, I'm taking this to the grave with me. There's no way <laughs> I'm talking about this or talking about that. And another one that I talk about in the book is I talk about keeping your mouth closed. Actually, I said, shut your damn mouth. And I say it that way because it took me so many lessons to learn, like keep your visions and your goals to yourself. And I did not know the power behind that of not telling everyone your vision, not telling your business to absolutely everyone. Again, I was that people pleaser, needed validation person. And when you keep so much to yourself and when you um, keep your visions and your goals and your dreams and, you know, your aspirations to yourself, you would definitely start to see those things come to pass. You have nobody to self um, sabotage you. You have nobody to say, well, you know what? That's not for you. You know, they begin to delore uh, your faith. It. So yes, it's, they begin- it's keeping mm-hmm. your mouth shut to the ones that are going to shoot it down. Yes, and actually the ones keeping that are it closed until it come to pass. Actually keeping it closed to absolutely anyone until really? it come to pass. Because a lot of times we feel that, you know, oh, she's been my friend for 30 years or this person's been my friend for 15 years or, you know, or such and such, such. And when you start talking about things that is bigger and higher and to another level, some people don't know how to take that. And some people will begin to put their fear off on you so here you are and you are believing for something and because they didn't put their fear off on you so now you're fearful of believing 
in the impossible. Now you're in fear. Now your manifestation can't come to pass because now you don't believe. And so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's tough. definitely the ones that are mm -hmm. the ones that like, yeah, they've been your friends. They don't understand business. They don't yeah. understand entrepreneurship. They don't understand mm -hmm. what it like. Honestly, I don't even know if my family totally understands what it is I do for a living. And I've been doing it since 2014, like you, right? And, <laughs> and they're like, you do what? You what? I don't quite understand, right? Because it's different. <laughs> Um, and yeah. you know, if I were to tell them all of my big, huge dreams, um, and goals and aspirations, they might go, um, I don't quite understand, but yay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cause I, I've been doing it for a while and I do have right. entrepreneurs in my family, so it's not as much of a naysay, but yes. yeah, I could see it. If you're, if you're somebody that's like, I'm jumping out and I'm the only entrepreneur mm -hmm. in my family. And I could see all of my friends and such being ones like, yes, oh, like just stay here. Just stay small. Don't think big. Don't rock the boat. That's like, it. Don't do any of that. That's it. Still love them. Still appreciate who they are oh, and who yes. they've been for me in my life. But I need to go over here mm -hmm. with the other group of entrepreneurs, right? Thank that are you. like, yes, That's tell it. us your dream, <laughs> you know, like go for it. it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. That's I get absolutely it. it. Oh yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Is there another another one you could share with us? Um, so another one that I shared in the Broken Woman from Business Woman. Um, um, I share. Ooh, I don't want to give away too much. Um, so I share a being authentic. So um, a being your authentic self, because I know a lot of people show up as entrepreneurs. It's hard for them to be themselves. And so they pretend to be someone else. So um, because being authentic is hard for many, especially a lot of people that I have met. And so I was definitely inspired to write on being authentic and what it really means to be authentic and why it's important because pretending to be somebody else, that can only last for so long. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I talk about being an authentic side of you and that goes back to who are you? And, you know, can a lot of people really answer that? Like really like, who are you? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So that's a writer downer right there. It's like, yeah. who are you? Who are you yeah. really? when you're not people pleasing, when you're not doing things because, you know, the world and the audience <clears throat> is just like, oh yeah, you're really good at that. You should do that. And you say, okay, mm -hmm. um, you know, who are you? What do you, who do you, what do you stand for? What is life yeah. Really like? Yeah, being your true authentic self and really tapping back into that. I think that's a, mm -hmm. a great point for people oh, yeah. to start looking at. Yeah, yeah I have an um, entrepreneur um, lady and she shared in the magazine, so I'm freely to talk about it. Um, she um, She's a successful entrepreneur, and but she said that when she ended up meeting her husband, um, they've been together for 14 years. And so they got separated for two years. And so she said that she reconnecting with her husband, but she said she had to show up. It was hard for her to show up as herself because for 14 years, she pretended to be mm -hmm. somebody that she wasn't. Mm -hmm. And she felt like she needed to show up as somebody else because she didn't know who she was. Mm -hmm. So she needed to be whatever he needed her to be. And so, you know, showing up even in your brand, your business, you know, still being professional, but showing up as you, who are you, you know, and I, and that took me when I turned 37, I was like, I'm this goofy romance writer, <laughs> you know, and I was like, yeah, I'm this goofy, I'm this romance, like, this is what I love to do. I love to laugh. I, you know, and I was like, okay, this is who I am. And my biggest accomplish in life was knowing who I am and loving who I am and liking me and how I do it. Yep. Yeah. I love it. I love it. That's amazing. Um, okay. So time has just flown by. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> but we've been talking about about your your book and the 12 steps. Um, is there a way that they can maybe pick up the book? Is, you do have a, a way for people to stay in touch and in contact with you? Yes. So the book is on Amazon and from Broken Woman to Business Woman by Demetria Bowie. Um, it's on Amazon, hardback, paperback, Kindle, all of that. And they can even get um, the first couple of chapters first couple um, chapters for free um, on my website. So I would definitely um, give you that link. And um, so they can read the first uh, two chapters. I think on Kindle, you can read like the first chapter for free or something like that on Kindle. I know it's something like that. So um, yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So we'll definitely have the link in the show notes if you want to take a look at the first few chapters and see if there's some resonance and you want to get all 12 of the steps um, that she ends up talking about. Beautiful. I love it. Um, before I let you go, is there any kind of takeaway or memorable note that you'd like to leave our audience with today? Yes, it is. You know, again, I would tell people to definitely show up as them and to believe in yourself of anything that you want to do you can accomplish and that first belief starts with you everything starts with you believing in yourself believing in the impossible and I know that we hear this all the time but don't take that for granted and don't take yourself for granted don't take your gift for granted and to keep going no matter what your reality is no matter what your reality is right now I don't care if you are in a two-bedroom home and you desire a bigger home a six-bedroom living in I don't know Beverly Hills or whatever whatever it is that you desire please please know that it is it's not it, it, it's not impossible. It is possible for you, for you if you just believe in yourself and definitely keep going, working hard and all of your um, dreams will become reality. You will manifest them all. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for being with us and joining us today. Thank you. And thank you all for listening um, to another episode of Creating Powerful Impact. I'm excited for you to take all of the lessons that you learned here today, mm -hmm. utilize the resources, start implementing them, and creating even more impact in your world. So until next time, have an outstanding rest of your day. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to the Creating Powerful Impact podcast. If you are a successful coach, speaker, author, or thought leader who would like to be on this program, simply visit creatingpowerfulimpact.com forward slash guest. If you are someone who got something out of this interview, would you please do me a favor and share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on your socials. Also, if you know somebody that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag creating powerful impact. I love seeing all of your posts and great guest selections. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content to make sure you don't miss any episodes. Go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show, and they really mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more about us? Head on over to our website, graceandeaseproductions.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram. Just look for Grace and Ease Productions on your favorite platform. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.